Hello and welcome to Lunch Brain, the show that puts big ideas into an adorable little bento box for you. This is Marshall Edwards, your host. Today we'll be discussing the intense world theory of autism. This theory was created by researchers Camilla and Henry Markram in 2010. This theory states that the autistic brain is home to supercharged microcircuits. These microcircuits are a small unit of the brain that works together to process information. An autistic person absorbs information very fully, so it can be hard to organize this information quickly or in an immediately usable way. On the other hand, autistic people often make connections that other people aren't able to make. Uh, one of the results of this intensity of, of stimulation and sensation is the uh, control of sensation through different coping mechanisms. In the autistic brain, to quote a popular Twitter campaign, everything happens so much. For example, a touch on bare skin for an autistic person, if they're not expecting it, can be an extreme sensation because the brain is trying to uh, process that sensation so completely. Uh, this can be met mitigated by the autistic person wearing tight clothing or covering clothing or even uh, heavy draping clothing that uh, provides a steady sensation to the body. Uh, but it, as, a, as the friend of an autistic person, you can prevent this by letting them know you're present before you touch them, by establishing a pattern, and most of all by talking with an autistic person about their boundaries and respecting those boundaries when they are presented. Autistic children start developing coping mechanisms early on to help control the sensations that they are being bombarded with from all sides. Uh, these can include things such as stimming. Stimming covers a wide range of uh, behaviors such as rocking in place, um, grinding teeth, tapping feet or fingers, uh, cracking knuckles, squeezing or flapping hands, and so on. The benefit for the autistic person is that this provides a controlled sensation which they can use as a filter or background noise, uh, almost like a steady beat for a rock song, for which they can help process everything else that's uh, going on around them. It definitely helps me. For instance, when I'm at work, I use headphones all the time. I have uh, one ear covered and one ear uncovered, so that I have a constant source of predictable noise in one ear, and another ear uh, ready to receive information from my surroundings, whether it's a machine going off, uh, someone needing to speak to me or get my attention, or any other stimulus. Uh, the result, if I don't do that, is that everyday noises, even if I know what I'm listening for, can disorient me and cause uh, me to very quickly become overstimulated and unable to function. Now here's where I editorialize a little bit. Um, I would describe the intense world theory of autism as a superpower you can't turn off. On the one hand, your brain is making all these intense connections and analyses of everything that's going on around you, which can allow you to come up with insights or ideas or realizations that no one else is having. And that can be very, very useful and inspiring and can bring you a lot of joy. At the same time, you're unable to filter out things that other people naturally are able to put into the background, such as irritating noises, for example, or uh, sudden shocks that affect you much more severely than someone else. So I think that in order for people, with aut for autistic people to live happily with this overstimulated state of mind, there has to be some sort of organization in their interactions, and that's where families, workplaces, and social spaces need to work to accommodate these uh, needs. Because, let's face it, as I've said earlier in the video, autistic people have been making accommodations for everyone else since they were tiny babes. Um, we've been stimming so we can control your outbursts and loud noises. 
Uh, there's just a lot of things that are acceptable in the atmosphere for 90% of the people that will cause meltdowns or shutdowns or improper functioning in autistic people, no matter how hard we try. <laughs> and we are trying. We're trying very hard, but we need everyone else to help us out. So that's my take. Not everyone's going to agree with it, but that's where I stand. Anyway, thanks for tuning in for this episode of Lunch Brain. I'm Marshall Edwards. Thanks for listening, and if you agree with my opinion, feel free to comment. If you disagree, feel free to comment. Please try to keep it civil, if you can. And I, you know, I'm not a total expert. I do have autism. I do have a lot of the sensory issues described here. But at the same time, I'm not the only person with these issues, and there are a lot of ways to interpret what's going on and to look at the intense world theory. So uh, until next time, um, feel free to subscribe and give this a like and share it around if you like it. Thank you very much. Bye.